Good morning, everyone. Before we begin our celebration on this 25th Sunday in Ordinary Times, I would just like to remind us that the dispensation ended for Masses on September 14th. But as the Archbishop stated, we know there are still various individuals because of health reasons and the careers, jobs they might have where they work with those who have health issues that we will continue to record the Sunday Mass for those because of health issues and issues connected to those they work with every week. So we will continue the recorded Sunday Masses for all of you. Also, please keep all of our first communicants in your prayers because this weekend we completed both communion classes so now our third graders have all received their first communion, except for a couple who will over the next month. But keep our new first communions in your prayers. And so let us stand now as we begin with our opening song.
A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way and the wicked his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God, who is generous in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Spirit, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Now Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out at dawn to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with them for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. Going out about nine o'clock, the landowner saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said to them, you too go into my vineyard, and I will give you what is just. So they went off. And he went out again around noon, and around three o'clock, and did likewise. Going out about five o'clock, the landowner found others standing around and said to them, Why do you stand here idle all day? They answered, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You too go into my vineyard. When it was evening, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, Some of the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and ending with the first. When those who had started about five o'clock came, each received the usual daily wage. So when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also got the usual wage. And now receiving it, they grumbled and complained against the landowner, saying, These last ones worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who bore the day's burden and the heat. The master said to them in reply, My friend, am I cheating you? Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what is yours and go. What if I wish to give this last one the same as you? Or am I not free to do as I wish on my own with my own money? Are you envious? I am generous. Thus, the last will be first, and the first will be last. The gospel, the good news of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to try something different this Sunday, and please let us know. Usually when I'm using my mic, there's a couple who have said that there's an echo. So I'm going to use the mic of the camera to give my homily this week and let us know which works better because we want the best for all of you. So let's look at this beautiful gospel because this gospel is the culmination of the last three weeks in Matthew. It's a chapter and a half where what Jesus is doing is as we heard in the very first reading today, God's ways are not our ways. And what Jesus is doing for his disciples, if you notice, this isn't for the crowds. This is for those who are closest to him. He's trying to say, how do you see the world around you? How do you see the people around you? How do you see the country you live in around you? How do you see the family that lives around you? Because you and I sometimes get into these set ruts of how things should be. In other words, I've learned that this is the reality, and so this is the way it is. Or this is the way I learned how my brother or sister or my coworker or son, this is how they have been for 30 years, and that's how they always will be. But you remember, God's ways are not What Jesus came to do is change hearts. He says that over and over in the four Gospels, doesn't he? Where your heart is, that's where your treasure is. We call it metanoia, a change of heart. Because where our heart is, is how we judge our brothers and sisters, how we judge work, how we judge our country, how we judge the world. And if our heart is so rock hard, you remember in Moses, the story of Exodus? How often does God use the word, they harden their hearts? So what Jesus presents is, hey, if you are my followers, 
Harden not your hearts. We've heard that song many times, haven't we? Harden not your hearts. Let your hearts be open the way God is open to us. And therefore, look what Jesus has presented over the past few weeks. Who is the greatest of the apostles? You remember, they're fighting with each other. Who's the greatest? And then what does he do in the middle of that story? He takes a child and says, here is the greatest in the kingdom of God. Wait a minute. It's not one of us apostles who know you and love you and care for you. You put a child in front of us? Why? Think of how children view the world. They're open to all the beauty and wonder in the world, aren't they? It's not until we get older that we become what? Hardened and cynical and jealous and envious? Think of the next thing he turns us upside down on. The last will be first and the first will be last. Wait a minute. That doesn't work. Think about that. How many of you would go nuts if a coworker came in and worked one hour and got paid exactly what you did for eight hours? Hmm. I think we'd be in court on that one, wouldn't we? If you're honest. And yet Jesus turns that upside down. Not only that, think of the story that just appeared before this where what has happened is this young man says, Lord, I have followed the commandments. How do I go further? And Jesus says, go and sell all you have, give to the poor and come follow me. And of course, Peter, what we didn't hear today, Peter gets upset and says, then who can make it to heaven? And that's when Jesus is saying, again, turning our world upside down, it's not just following the laws of the church. It's the issue of those laws leading you to that deeper reality of how do you love God and neighbor. Because many times we take the simple way out, don't we? We call it the simple stupid, the keep it simple stupid rule. Well, I'm following the commandments, I must be a good Catholic. No, no, no. As that young man taught us, following the Ten Commandments is only the beginning. That should lead to the deeper reality of a relationship that is based on God and neighbor. And that's where Jesus is busy changing hearts, changing how we look at the world to not let our cynical, narrow-mindedness guide us because God's ways are not our ways. Let me give you a good example of that. If I go in and ask an adult community, what's half of eight? Everyone will respond immediately, four. Now, if I go into a second grade class or first grade class and ask, what's half of eight? I will get three different answers. And you're going, how can that be? Well, did I ask you half of eight mathematically? Think about that. If I asked half of eight mathematically, it is what? Four. But what if I asked you half of eight and you're thinking, well, cut the number eight in half like that, then the answer is zero. What if I ask you half of eight and you cut the number this way, the answer is three. So in a second grade and first grade class, you will get answers like zero, you will get answers like three, and you will get answers like four because they're looking at half of eight different ways. Do we do that with life? Do we look at it in different ways or have we set people in stone that they don't have the ability to change? And that's why Jesus came to change hearts. Mercy and compassion are based on the heart. And if our hearts are hardened, how are we going to show mercy and compassion to each other? How are we going to grow as the kingdom of God? Two sons and their father were asked to look at something. And the father brought them out to a field. And he said, on top of that hill in the far land is a tree. Go and observe it. 
Well, the one son went out there, and he observed the tree about two months later and looked at it, and he says, hmm, I love it. It's full of red and orange and yellow leaves. About four months later, the other son went out, and he looked at that same tree, and he says, oh my gosh, that tree is bare as anything. There's nothing on it. They both came back to Dan, and they shared their story of what they saw. And the one brother looked at the other, no, you're wrong. When I went out there, it was full of yellow and orange and red leaves. And the other said, there's not a single leaf on it. What are you talking about? They went at a different time, didn't they? A different season. They looked at the same tree, but they saw different things. The challenge that Jesus presents as in that story, as with the first and second graders. Things aren't always set in the way we think they are. When you deal with your neighbor, when you deal with your brother or sister, when you deal with your coworker, when you deal with whoever is in the world, even God, we have to allow our hearts to grow because people see reality in many different ways as those two brothers saw that tree in a different way, as the first and second graders will see half of eight in multiple ways. That's why Jesus came to change hearts, because you and I can look at the same person, and if we truly act as God acts, as Jesus was challenging his disciples, we can see in that person many things. That's why when that owner said to the one grumbling worker in the field, am I not willing and able to be generous? Just because you judge me as being unfair to the other, I'm being generous. As I said the other day to someone, when people always ask me to pray for good weather, I said, whose opinion of good weather? There are times that my farmers want rain, but my people in the city want sunshine. So when I pray for good weather, I just pray for the weather that's needed by my many people. Because rain for one is a joy, rain for the other is a pain. Sun for the one is a pain, and sun for the other is a joy. Where the heart is, that's where your treasure is. Because in that heart, the last will be first, and the first will be last. The mighty will be lowly, and the lowly will be mighty. And vice versa. Because with God, all things are possible. Let us stand now as we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, life from life, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, Lord, the giver of life, proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken spoken through the prophets. I believe believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. And so now we turn to our God in prayer. 
asking that our hearts may not be hardened, but that we may open our hearts up, knowing that God's ways are not our ways. The response to our intercessions is, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that we may strive always to conduct ourselves in a way worthy of the gospel of Christ, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For political leaders at every level, that they may be compassionate to those who are most vulnerable, to those who have been overlooked or forgotten, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all those who work in the fields, on farms, and in vineyards, harvesting the food we eat, that they may be rewarded generously for their labor, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all those who have been affected by hurricanes and flooding, may they know the healing hand of the Father, and may we seek to care and assist them in any way we can, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That our community may invite and welcome others at all times with the generosity modeled by the landowner in today's gospel. We pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those who have died and for the special intention of this Mass, for all parishioners, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the prayers inscribed in our book of special intentions, for all of those who have asked us to pray for them, and for the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, as the landowner's generosity shows the generosity of you in our life, help us what you have given us give to each other that love and compassion and mercy. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And so may the peace of the Lord be with all of you. And with your spirit. Let us now share some sign of God's peace.
that we may come to possess your redemption, both in mystery and in the manner of our love, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a reminder, next weekend we are celebrating our Irish Fest here at St. Francis. On Saturday evening we have a wonderful fiddlers group coming out of Chicago to celebrate here actually at St. Francis in the church. Therefore, get the word out that next Saturday's Mass will be at 4.30, not 5.15. If you would like to have a pickup for food on Sunday, we have and so many other wonderful foods to celebrate the Irish Fest. So we hope you can maybe join us by picking up some food or getting your raffle ticket because it should be a wonderful day. And so the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may the blessings of Almighty God be with all us in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Have a great week.